Hi. I thought I would do a tutorial for kids on the um, continuous line drawing because I think it would be kind of a fun activity for them to do and um, they could do a million of them in a little bit of time. So um, I'm like a child. I like instant gratification and this is a project that has instant gratification. So to start, get yourself some paper. Um, for this, we are not doing anything fancy. This is just a a lightweight sketch pad. Um, I've had it forever, so I thought I'll just use it for this. So anyway, so um, it is a six by six. You can use big, big paper. You could use any size. Just grab a piece of paper. So um, the tools you're going to need is you're going to need um, some kind of waterproof um, pen. You can use a Sharpie, Micron, um, things that won't, um, bleed whenever you add some water or some paint to it. You can also use something that, that'll, that will bleed like a regular marker and use, um, crayons instead of any kind of watercolor or, um, that type of thing. So if you're going to color in your drawing, then it doesn't matter. Just grab a black marker and go for it. But most people have Sharpies around their house. And so I thought this one would be a good one to start with. So basically what you're going to do is you're going to draw something. And when you draw, you're, it, the game is, is that you, when, once you put your pin down, you can't lift it up. If you lift it up, just put it right back down where you're at. So here we go. We're going to do this. We're going to do the first one we're going to do. Um, let's do a tree. So say I'm going to take the trunk up and so it may look kind of crazy and that's kind of the fun of it is that you want this crazy fun drawing. So I like a lot of texture, so I'm just kind of going to make, it may not look exactly like the most perfect tree and that's what's fun about it. You just want the shapes of what it would be and then the ground and there you go. You have a tree. So I never lifted my pen. And now we have a um, pattern I'm going to paint in it. Um, I have my watercolors out, but I also have, I also have crayons and all kinds of stuff that you could use, but you could do whatever you want to. If you're, cray if you're using crayon or colored pencils, it might be fun to section off each section and add a different color to each section. I don't know. So let's, um, paint this. So now how I do it is I just, I don't like anything too perfect. So like I'm just laying down some color. Um, although I do not want that drop on the outside. So if you're water coloring and you make a mistake, just grab the water and sop it up. There you go. So move this water around. So this, and this paper is not watercolor paper, so it's going to be a little, um, buckly, but it doesn't matter. We're just playing. We're just having fun. Okay. So <clears throat> let's take, I'm, I'm just going to take some green and drop it into the little, sections and I did straight on color. I didn't dilute it. I should have, but I didn't. So anyways, I'm just kind of putting some green down. You can see where it would be kind of fun to color it because then you could take each one of these little sections and make them a different color. And, and I know that, um, a tree is traditionally just green, but, um, I think it's fun to mix it up and add different colors. So I'm going to add some different colors in here. I'm going to add some blue, um, which will blend in and make a kind of a color of green, but I just like it. I think it's kind of fun to do something different. And then let's add some really dark blue, like maybe Payne's gray. Cause that's what I always like to go to. Cause I love Payne's gray. That was not Payne's gray. Sorry. I lied. Here we go. I found it. and just add it around. The cool part with watercolor is that whenever it dries, it dries totally different than what you think it looks like. So don't worry about how it looks like right now. It's gonna change as it dries. It's gonna take on a whole different look, not a whole different look, but it's, it's just not gonna be the same. 
Now for the trunk, let's do, I think I have some black, but I don't normally have a lot of browns in my color um, palette just because I can um, make them pretty easily. You can make mud so easy by blending all the colors. And so I normally don't have a lot of browns. So we're just gonna kinda do this. And then take a little darkness at the different places, some black, I don't know. There you go. So now you have a tree. All right. So when you come back, I'm gonna let this dry and then we'll move on to the next one. Okay, now our tree is dried and we're gonna move on to the next one. But you can see how the colors take on maybe just a little bit lighter when, than what they are on the um, when they're wet. All right, so I'm gonna flip this over and let's take um, a Sharpie. I'm gonna take a Sharpie, the bigger Sharpie. This one, this one is a um, ultra fine point and this one is just the fine point. So what I thought we could do is again, and when you're doing, I wanted to mention whenever you're doing these line drawings, hold your pen at the end of the pen. That way it's loose and it's, um, you're not controlling it too much. It's fun when you're not controlling it too much. Okay, so so now we're gonna, let's draw an apple. I'm gonna tell you what it is so that you know what it is whenever it doesn't look like an apple, okay? All right, so. And I'm gonna go over it a little bit and then we're gonna, there we go. Kinda looks like a peach, so maybe, There you go. It'll we'll make it look like an apple, I promise. All right, sort of, anyways. All right, so what I thought we would do is use markers because um, I'm guessing a lot of you have markers on hand. There's a couple ways you can do it. You can take a marker with a brush, add some water to your brush, and then just touch the tip of the, the marker and it works like a watercolor. All you have to do is this, and it um, it works just like watercolor. So if you have markers and you have a brush and a thing of water, you can make it work like a um, watercolor paint. So, anyways, so let's, or you could just take it and lay down some color. And um, so do you see where it, when it hits the water, it kind of spreads out the color? And I think you can take, I think this will work. Just when I say it's going to work, it won't. But I think you can take your wet brush and then add it to this and kind of smush around the colors. There you go, look at that. It kind of looks like an apple. Um, let's see, I have a brown one we'll use here. Let's see, add some color. There you go. And then green for the leaf, and I love bright green. So I'm gonna add some bright green here, and maybe some here. Well, maybe we'll do a little bit there. And then I'll grab another green just to see how it looks next to it. I have a zillion markers because I kind of have this secret look here. I'll show you. I have a lot of markers. Probably not as much as you have, but I have a lot of markers. I like markers. They're fun, they're always, um, they're portable. I like things that are portable. I like to travel with my art. There you go, just kinda. And again, I'm holding everything very loosely. Cause once you get, you, you get too serious about it. When you hold things up 
too tightly, things get too serious. We don't want things too serious. We don't want to fuss about our art. We just want it to come naturally and we want to have fun with it. We don't want to make it too perfect because then it takes the fun away from it. For this purpose, if you're working on a masterpiece for your grandma, I get that you're going to want to do something different. But for this, we just want it loose and fun. So I'll come back after this one dries. All right, so now our apple has dried. And I love all the gooey, flowy textures that are going on. If you're looking at it, you can see some white space, you can see there's some drip, drippies, and you can tell that I didn't really try too hard. I just enjoyed myself. And that is the best, that's the best part of this. So now I'm gonna flip it over. And I just thought we would do a few continuous line drawings without any um, paint or um, color. And then later on, you can come back and add color to them if you want to. But um, so look around you and um, whatever, like see if you see something, draw it. So like, just look around where you're sitting right now. And if you see something, draw it. So right now I see pens. So I'm gonna do a pen. I'm gonna draw a pen. Oh, I kind of lifted that one up a little bit, sorry. So, um, eh. So the game is that you do not lift. And so sometimes that can be so tricky to make things look how you want them to look. And I think that that's why we do this so that we can kind of let go some of our perfection, perfectionistic type of um, um, goals whenever you're doing art and art is fun whenever you um, let it happen naturally. So there you go. There's a pen. Now let's try something else. And again, holding the pen, pen at the end, um, I'm just looking around me and I have um, some jars here. So I'm just going to kind of try to do a draw. <laughs> I'm going to have to show you guys what I'm drawing whenever I'm done because this does not look like what I'm doing. Uh -huh. Okay, this is supposed to be a jar and it has these um, rusty type designs here. So we're going to draw those. This will be funner whenever I add some paint to it. And then you can draw the thing. All right, let me show you what I tried to draw. This little jar. You can kind of see it, right? Kind of see it. All right. Let's see what else do I have around me. Um, all right, I have this. You can see if, I'll see if you can guess this before I even finish. This one's gonna be tricky. I have a tendency to want control over this stuff and holding the pen towards the end is so much harder to have any kind of control so it doesn't look exactly how I want it but it's fun it's good for me not to do that it's good for me to just have fun with art and enjoy it and I'm looking at the object and not so much at my pen so <clears throat> try to look at what you're drawing while you're doing it. There you go. Okay. This is such good practice. It's good for your brain, your um, creative side of your brain. It's very, very good. I think I'm going rogue at this part. Okay. There we go. Almost done, and then I'll show you. All right. 
this is what I was drawing and that <laughs> and this is what we got so much fun okay now let's do I'm gonna do one more let me okay uh, all right drawing with pen is also challenging because you can't erase and um, when you're looking at something and not looking at what you're drawing, it creates a challenge as well. So I just drew my water. And again, I'm looking at my water, not looking at my pad so much. I glance over at my pad as I'm drawing, but I'm mostly looking at that. Now you can go in and you can take crayon, markers, watercolor, and... Um, color in this and then it's going to add some interest to it. So with this one, I'm just going to do a few little things just so you can see how it starts to come alive because I um, add some color. So you just kind of add some color and it starts to actually look like what I intended it. It, it comes closer anyways, right? It comes a little closer. Um, let's see here. My water's getting dirty. Okay. I'm going to just kind of drop some color here. I can't even come close to paint the mess that I have on my, on my palette because it's just really messy right now. But anyways, you get the idea. You just kind of um, have fun with it, enjoy it, and um, and it will actually help your art if you if you um, do these type of practices. It helps you loosen up and um, enjoy the art. You should always be enjoying the art that you're doing. But anyways, um, I'll come back um, in a day or two and do another video for you guys. I hope you enjoy it. Have a good day.